Hi, everybody. Welcome back. In the last segment, we talked about, um, the last few segments, we've been talking about work as being a, um, a function of uh, force times a distance, all right? Work, ooh, I'm still in my purple. I'm going to go with red. Work is a force applied over a distance. And then there's maybe a cosine of something in there, but the very basic uh, form, it's a force applied over a distance. Well, we talked about how um, you can have, a, if you have a constant force, and so here's a force right here, and there's a constant force of, say, three meters, or sorry, three meters, I'm sorry, three newtons, um, all right, and it's applied over a certain distance, um, so from position one to position two right here, all right, well, that area that it kind of sweeps out, so from that distance, that area is going to represent the work that has been done. Again, that was easy to figure out because we've got a constant force. But this new idea of springs, well, not a new idea, but this, it's new to us, um, it kind of throws a, a curveball at us because springs uh, push or pull uh, in accordance with how far they have been stretched. And they might push with a certain force or pull with a, cer with a certain force um, more or less, depending on if you pull them more or less. So first of all, let's just talk about the way springs behave, and then we'll get into the, the, the graphical interpretation of how springs do work. All right. First of all, springs can push or pull. Uh, let me switch colors here. I'm going to go to blue. All right. So I have a spring right here over on the right-hand side. And uh, it's on the ground right there. And this spring is just sitting here, standing up, uh, minding its own business. All right. And we say it's at its equilibrium length. It is not stretched at all. We can say that maybe right there is, um, is zero. All right. So it's, it's uh, displaced zero meters. Okay. Well, if you displace it downwards, if you squeeze it down and those coils become a lot tighter, all right, or if you stretch it out, you have caused it to be displaced. It has undergone a displacement. So that's a distance or displacement there, and this is a distance or displacement right there. Okay. Well, depending on how much you displace it, that spring will feed back. It'll push back or pull back with a certain force. Um, I'll switch to, uh, to oh, I don't know, green right here. All right. So if I pull a spring, so here it's just at its regular length. It's my mining tone business. If I stretch a spring out, what direction is, is it going to apply a force? Well, it's going to apply a force back in, right? Inside, I'm going to call that F. S, the force of the spring. If I displace a spring inwards, if I squeeze it down, how is it going to apply a force? It's going to push back. So force of the spring is being pushed back right there. So it always wants to return to the equilibrium length. Um, so very, very briefly, uh, in a previous chapter, we mentioned something called Hooke's Law. Um, and I'm kind of bringing it up again. What Hooke's law is, is um, a description of the amount of force that a sp uh, spring applies. And that I've already kind of described as Fs. So this is the spring force right here. Well, this force that a spring applies, like I said, is in accordance with how much you stretch it. The more you stretch a spring, the more it pushes back. Um, if you push it or pull it a little teeny tiny bit, it feeds back with a small force. If you squeeze it down really tight or if you, if you sp uh, sp uh, spread or stretch it way out, it feeds back with a much greater force. And so that is what um, this distance x is right here. That's these guys, that or that. Well, what's this negative k right here? Well, first of all, let's take care of the, the negative. However you displace it, it's always going to want to push or pull back in the opposite direction. If I displace it outwards right here, the spring is going to want to pull back. If I displace it inwards right here, the, dis the spring is going to want to push back. So that's where the negative comes from. Um, it just means that it pushes back in the opposite direction. But let's look at this K now. What is K? K is what we call the spring constant. K is um, it's a value of certain newtons per 
meter. You might say it's a measure of the spring's stiffness. All right, so that if you were to stretch us that spring, if you could, a whole meter, how many newtons would it feed back or pull, push or pull back with um, over that meter? Okay, if you stretch it a half a meter, it'll it'll push back with half the number of newtons. If you if you make it two times two meters, it'll double that force. So let's just pretend a spring has a certain spring constant of uh, nine hundred newtons per meter. All right. If you stretch it two meters, it'll feed back with um, 1,800 newtons. Right? That's the spring constant right there. So this is kind of a multiplier that helps us figure out if we stretch a spring a certain distance, how many newtons of force is it going to feed back with? That's our spring constant. We call it K. And um, that's going to come... Uh, come in very handy for figuring out how much a spring is going to, how much force a spring is going to apply. Now, I just realized that <clears throat> I kind of described all this stuff already to you, that the, the force of a spring, F sub S, I'm going to call it, is negative Kx. So all you do is you multiply that spring constant times that, um, uh, times the, uh, the, 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 the displacement. Remember, force is in newtons, Right, and uh, the 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 k constant is in newtons per meter, and x or our distance is in meters right there. So, well, this meters would uh, would cancel out with the meters in the denominator, and you would have a value simply in uh, in newtons right there. So all the units actually work out, all right? But remember that the the k constant is the measure of the stiffness of the spring. The higher the k constant, the more newtons per meter it will feed back. All right. So even though technically um, the force is always in the opposite direction that you apply, um, so you apply force inwards. I'm sorry. If you displace it inwards, the spring pushes outwards. F R S right there. And if you pull the spring outwards, the the, the spring pushes inwards. But we're just going to look at the absolute value for now. All right, the, the, the amount of force that the spring produces based on how much you displace it, whether it's in or it's out. All right, as I said in the, the previous slide, I may have already kind of uh, described some of the stuff already, but um, this distance L right here, um, just for our purposes right now, we're going to call it the equilibrium length. All right, this spring is just sitting here minding its own business. So if you pull it out to some displacement x, the amount of force that the spring is going to feed back is equivalent to kx. All right? If you double that x, that's going to uh, result in twice the amount of force. <clears throat> so Because it's like it's force equals k times 2x, so you've doubled the force right there. Same thing um, with displacing it uh, inwards. All right? You can pull it out and get some sort of a force feedback from the spring. You can even push it inwards and get the same force back um, feedback from the spring because whether you displace it outwards a distance or inwards a distance, it's the same uh, distance and it will produce the same force. Okay, so maybe a way to, um, to best kind of understand this is simply to do an example. And we're going to do a pretty basic one involving a uh, toy bulldozer. Okay, and so this is going to be example six, seven, and then that's going to be it for this segment. All right, so we've got a toy bulldozer that's attached to the wall and stretches a spring with a spring constant of 1,300 newtons per meter. All right, so let's write that down. Our K constant, K equals 13, erase that, equals 1,300 newtons per meter. Now, that may seem like a lot, but when was the last time you took a spring and you stretched it a whole meter um, without breaking it? All right, um, you can break springs. You can uh, overstress them. Um, or if you did stretch a spring a whole meter, you probably, by the way, a meter is about your, your arm span, or, well, a little less than your arm span, uh, if you're a, uh, an average high school student, um, and, um, and so if you pull a spring that far, it's going to feed back with a lot of force, all right? Well, that's to the tune of 1,300 newtons. The distance that you, oh, and now my phone is ringing. Okay, I had to pause there for a second. Sorry, you guys, my phone is ringing, and it was soliciting. So, um, sorry about that. 
So this is our spring constant, uh, 1300 newtons per meter. The distance that we displace the spring is 0.45 meters, right? We stretch it a distance of 0.45 meters. So that is our x value right there, 0.45 meters in the positive x direction. Find the magnitude and direction. Direction we'll worry about a little bit later, but let's just find the magnitude first, all right? The absolute value that the spring force exerts on the wall and on the bulldozer, okay? So F S is what we want to find. Well, Hooke's law tells us that the spring force is equal to K times X. All right, and actually there's a negative in front of it right there, but uh, let's just find the, the absolute value first, all right? Well, we'll worry about the direction. So our X, we have stretched the spring outwards in that direction right there, and that's our 0.45 meters. Well, let's multiply our K times X. So that's 1300 newtons per meter times 0.45 meters. And of course, if you look, the meters cancel out and we're just left with just newtons. And that's gonna be a force of how many newtons? I get 585 newtons. 585 newtons. So that's the magnitude of the amount of force that the spring is is applying, okay? So if I stretch a spring outwards, so if I pull outwards on this end of the spring right here, what direction is this end of the spring gonna be, um, gonna be pulling? It's gonna be pulling back inwards, right? <clears throat> That's the force of the spring. What about from the wall? Well, the wall isn't pulling, but it's applying a force, right? I mean, the reason the wall is there is that it can apply apply forces. So you're stretching the spring and the wall is holding the one end. Um, and uh, so that means that the spring is pulling on the wall. The spring is also pulling back inwards that direction as well. And what's true of these two spring forces? These two ends right here? They're going to be equal. You can think of them as like tension, right? You know that tension in a string, not a spring, but a string is going to be equal in both directions. And the same thing is going to be true right here. This is simply um, a, a string, or think of it as a rope, that has a variable tension in it. And actually, if you think about that for a second, what is something that is like a string or a rope that has a variable? Well, the variable tension, a rubber band. The more you stretch a rubber band, the more it feeds back until, of course, you break it. But think of this spring as being just like a rubber band or like a rope that has a variable tension or variable force in it, depending upon how much you stretch it out. All right, so for right now, I'm going to um, stop and then we'll pick up in the next segment on how we graphically um, kind of uh, interpret or graphically uh, display a spring's variable force over some distance. And we're going to have a new, um, a new uh, definition for work done by a spring in that one. So uh, for the time being, I'm going to stop and I'm going to thank you for following along and please make sure you have if you have any questions to ask me, and I'll see you on the next one.